does that also negate you know the development or the uh, the progress you are making i'm not sure about that data anyway <laughs> did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning here's what you missed well in the studio today he is a uh, walking talking oxymoron uh, kennedy otieno otina is ex- otina or the ambo is executive director of masculinity institute there's a masculinity institute? Yes, there's a masculinity institute. In my invite and my... You need to come and join us there. <laughs> it's such a nice place for all the men in this country. What is happened right? masculinity What, what happened so to happens. men's conference? Is it part of men's conference? No, not the same way it was being perceived. Uh, uh-huh. You know, <laughs> there's so much that men can do to their fellow men. And okay. that is what we are creating a platform for them to just engage. Mm-hmm. Because that is something that has been lacking for forever. Yes. Right. Yeah, because every time when you talk about men and boys, it's about lamentation and, you know, mm. uh, boy, child. Uh, no boy child, but no action. Right. So we are bringing action. And how long has the, it been in effect? The organization has yeah. been there for a while. Uh, let's say 2012 is when it was registered. Oh, wow. But it, was, uh, it, it has been struggling. But then now it's back to its feet. Uh, is it that the same as or it's uh, different from Mindeleo Yawanaume? No, like that. it's not promoting that hegemonic kind of ideology. <laughs> we are transformative. We are using big words in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we are very transformative in the way we look and uh, perceive Hege- life um, hegemonic. Uh, by men and uh, for boys and men. I think your word for today should be hegemonic yeah, uh, be later it. on. Yes. In the meantime, there's public participation, right? Very in the legislation much. of the two-thirds gender principle. Actually, it's not more than two third gender principle uh-huh. because um, uh, when we talk about two thirds uh, we are uh, uh, not able to achieve that because of the number of factors but uh, the actual the, the right term for it is uh, not more than two third gender rule not it's more not more okay how is that working now so far so good because uh, there's a lot of effort that has been put in place in terms of uh, uh, constituting a team that is going to reach out to communities in different parts of this country in order for them to uh, sensitize the people but most importantly to have them contribute their ideas of how we can achieve the not more than two-thirds gender rule and so far we are uh, doing very well in terms of uh, gathering information from different parts of the country and we are sure that this time round, something good is going to occur. As opposed to the last time when it uh, failed miserably. As opposed to the last time when it failed. It may have not failed miserably, but it failed. Uh, failure is failure. failure and is F failure. is an F. <laughs> <laughs> Would you yeah. say maybe the failure was due to perceptions on men from, you know, who had that old school way of thinking? Because 20 years ago, compared to 15, compared to 5, is a big step in the right direction. Yeah, there's a big step uh, in terms of, you know, evidence of, you know, work that has happened. There's a lot of, you know, progress in terms of uh, uh, women who've been nominated and who've uh, gone to the next level of even vying for uh, competitive or elective positions. Mm. And that shows that, you know, it's possible for us to achieve the not more than two-thirds gender rule. Because um, if you trail some of the uh, women, current women uh, political leaders in the uh, governorship, could it be uh, members of parliament, their history uh, tells us that they were once nominated and... Um, as a step forward, they've been able to achieve uh, certain uh, levels of progress. And that's an indicator that Kenya is ready for, uh, you know, a gender equal society. But, but Kennedy, would you, mm. would you say, you know, because we are a patriarchal society, we also say, uh, what the, you know, because of the conference in 94, what a woman, man can do, a woman can do. So we have a lot of women who are getting into these seats. What conference in 94? The, well, uh, Beijing, the Beijing? Yeah. Uh, you're 86. talking about Beijing. No, that was, the 85 was Nairobi. But the, 85, the, yeah. 1985. The 1985 was Nairobi. And then 10 years, 10, ten, years, ten, ten years. later, because the, those conferences were organized in decades. So mm. there was a decade, uh, the Nairobi decade, and then there was the Beijing. Correct. Yeah. So this but, is after Beijing, yeah. where they said we are all equal, what a man can do, a woman can do. But now we have this situation where most women who get into these offices have to be nominated. They don't want to come neck and neck on the ground. So that we can say, okay, if you can do it, we can also do it. Historically, if you look at what we've experienced in Kenya, is that there are women who've already, who've, uh, you know, com- uh, offered themselves to these competitive positions. Mm. And uh, history can inform us about a number of them. I may not want to mention names, mm. but what we are doing or what the nominations have done 
is to create an, an, a, a platform for Kenyans to really understand that women, if given that chance, they can be able to achieve uh, all that they need to achieve. Because if you look at the political uh, landscape in this country, it's highly patriarchal and it has its own uh, dynamics, things, uh, issues of violence that occur during electioneering period. All that tend to curtail uh, uh, the participation of women in, poli in elective politics. So the nomination uh, or the nomin uh, native uh, positions mm. uh, that we've had in this country for the last 10 years were very instrumental in trying to, um, you know, affirm that uh, it's possible for women to uh, ascend to positions of uh, political leadership if given a chance. And that is a statement we were the, that, that, that uh, the nominations were giving Kenyans in terms of preparing them. Because if that was not the case, there are certain communities or certain areas in this country where women were not even allowed to sit ne ne near political activities. Well, Kennedy, when you look at the political landscape, out of 47 counties, only seven are controlled by, have women governors. Seven. Is that progress? That is good progress. If you look at what we, what we had uh, five years, ten years ago, you can already tell that we are moving from one level to the other. What we can now do is to even get to a higher number in terms of uh, women who are in those positions of uh, leadership in this country. But the women, the, the governors will tell you that the road to the governorship is rough in terms of campaigns, in terms of funding, in terms of uh, getting the support that they need. And even when you make it, people trying to pull you out or pull you down. Like Already we've seen. It is rigorous, I would say. And that is the environment that we are, you know, when we talk about nominative uh, nominations or nominative positions, that is the environment we are trying to change so that we uh, actually communicate to the communities men especially, that women can still vie for these positions and win. So uh, other things that we may talk about in terms of uh, what curtails women's, uh, women's leadership or women's uh, accent to these positions would be things like, you know, economic positioning, uh, issues around finance, issues around violence, issues around even political parties' uh, positions affect their candidature in this country. So the importance of the not more than two-thirds gender principle, what does it mean, Kennedy? It, is, it means that, you know, in this country we have a constitution, and the constitution uh, uh, recognizes the re different roles of men and women uh, of this country. And therefore, if the constitution already recognizes that, then we have no choice but to ensure that it's, uh, the, 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 the political landscape is representative of the people of this country, which are men and women of this country. But the way the country is right now, there's so many other priorities. You know, why bother with this when there are other things to take care of, to tackle right now? The not more than two-third uh, gender rule is a priority in this country. If you look at um, the demands or the dictates of the 2010 constitution, who are supposed to have achieved it? By the, uh, in five years' time, look at what we've uh, we've been doing with the with the with that provision in the constitution. That then means that um, all the time since the uh, since 2017, the parliament has been uh, illegally constituted. So it means that uh, we are operating in an illegal environment, and that means that um, there's a danger ahead if we are not able to achieve the not more than two third gender rule. So uh, what's the way forward, like uh, getting into the next, you know, the next election is in a couple of years. What, what, what are the steps you're taking towards rectifying that before that time? There's so much that is happening. First of all, we are uh, doing public participation in terms of uh, getting views from uh, members of the public uh, across the country, mm. where they are even giving us ideas of how they think Kenya can achieve this, not more than two-third gender rule, which is number one, very important. The second thing is a lot of civil, uh, civic education and civic participation amongst different people where they are sensitized that, you know, it's possible for this to happen. Um, uh, the, the biggest challenge has always been that there's no, uh, the, uh, people, um, some communities do not uh, create the, the opportunity 
for women to participate in politics. Because you know, also like the what do you call that area, like North East, you know, Eastern, they have their patriarchal way of operating, and so like such places would be very hard to penetrate. Uh, are, are they open to you know accepting maybe the first one, the second one? Because when you see one woman from there do something amazing, it changes so much. They even make it to you know like the lady who teacher who won something. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was international NASA. award. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like they really, can I say finilia? But how do you penetrate that? Because I've seen you are going to do uh, mobilize 50 women and 10 media persons from Kajado, Makwini, Machakos. Kisumu, we are open to having two third gender rule, <laughs> even 50 50 and Nakuru. But these other places. Sometimes uh, even Kajado itself is considered highly patriarchal mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the way they perceive uh, women and girls and issues around uh, political leadership. But I can assure you that uh, the country is ready. Uh, learning from what other uh, counties are doing, what other communities are doing. Everybody is raring to go. When you talk about uh, Northeastern, uh, even the existence of uh, the uh, 47 uh, elected women uh, representatives or uh, county women members of parliament is a very strong indication that, you know, it is possible. So what, what is happening now is that uh, people are looking at the landscape. How are women performing in terms of uh, uh, their, their, uh, their, their, their leadership in the, the different counties. And uh, the success of any woman leader in, a, in, in any specific country, county in this country is an example that inspires the rest of the country. So even the northern uh, frontier counties, uh, the northern uh, Kenya, uh, parts of Kenya, are already in, the, in sync with the trend. So um, I'm, I'm confident that um, there's a lot of change that is happening. Having been a gender student, a gender scholar, and also somebody who has worked a lot in the communities, I can assure you that there's change that is uh, in the offing. Okay, so all this is in, a lot of it is in theory. All this, you know, it looks like you're getting a lot of promises. What's the next step? How do we, how do we put in that into motion? What happens is that uh, we are now collecting ideas and formulas for, you know, implementing the not more than Kennedy, two-thirds. we've been collecting ideas for years. The, 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 it, it, is different. Oh, yeah. it, it is different now. Mm? It is different. You know, the, the ideas that were there then yeah. are not the same ideas that are coming uh, uh, about right now. And, and so w what we are doing is that um, the, the ideas that we have uh, that are being shared by different people are also very specific to their communities. So if you amalgamate the entire views from different parts of the country, then we can come up with, a, we can crack the formula for uh, achieving the not more than two-third gender rule. And I think the parliament is also ready to uh, debate soberly and also give it the necessary support if uh, need be. Being well mannered is taught from when you are a child and then you grow up into it. Maybe if you put it in the curriculum or have something done with children so by the time they get to a certain age, they've accepted that it is okay for women to be part of us or to lead us. It's okay for all these things to happen because as you've said, it's patriarchal. If at our age we're trying to push it and there's Zamze um, who his opinion matters, no matter what you say, if he says no, it's a no, so it erodes all these things you've been doing for five years or six or ten. You know what is also very important is mm. that uh, the existence of some of the organizations that we work for are actually supposed to target those hardliners, the so-called hardliner, the, you know, the, 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 the radical patriarchal uh, ide ideologies. No, let me not say radical patriarchal ideology. Patriarchy is patriarchy. Mm. So any, anybody who has a patriarchal ideology is our customer or our client. Because uh, one, of, one of the things is that um, the patriarchal ideology is not only affecting women and girls, it's affecting men even more. So uh, the moment, the sooner we begin to deconstruct and dissect patriarchy, mm. then we will be able to live as human beings, as men. And so there's no way we can be human if half of our population, or even more, more than half our population, is not involved in uh, our development programming or even in our decision-making processes, which now means that, you know, the two-third gender, uh, not more than two-third gender rule, is just a fraction. And it's, uh, the, the idea is not necessarily uh, looking at women per se. Uh, the idea is looking at gender, because uh, there could be uh, a, a stage in uh, the life of Kenyans when men might be in that state of, you know, being the minority 
or being uh, disadvantaged in, in terms of polit politi political representation. So what do we do? We don't want to come back to Nick and uh, Jeff to ask them to come and uh, redo the constitution for men. It's a safeguard for everybody. So uh, let us not look at it as only a women's issue. It is our issue as Kenyans. Mm. Yep. Look, um, most of the population of Kenya and Africa is under the age of 35. Mm -hmm. three, percent, uh, th three quarters of, of, uh, of about 100%, right? About 75%. Do you see the tide turning by the next election, by the next 10 years? Do you see the tide turning? There's, there's some good prospects of the tide turning because um, these are these are generation that is not so in uh, you know confined to cultural ideologies uh, they are open because they have participated in some of uh, uh, events uh, and they know that you know even within the environment where they live whether it is school whether it's work they've been seeing women in leadership positions so there's nothing ne there's nothing that is in the contrary that will now come in to say that now women can lead in corporate women can lead in 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 in, in, in other aspects of life but not in political uh, decision making in Kenya so I'm, I'm foreseeing a situation or a scenario where the next election will be quite uh, dynamic and we are likely to see an unaligned kind of um, uh, voting uh, where people will be voting based on uh, ideologies, based on cap capabilities and based on, you know, the national agenda that may be, in this, uh, uh, may be you know, popular at that time. And meritocracy as well. And meritocracy as a very key ingredient in political leadership this country but you know also at the same time and uh, as much as we also support two third gender rule we see like a lot of uh, females who make it to these positions and it's even reported in the news are sometimes girlfriends of the head honchos of these parties that there are a number of dynamics when it comes to political parties they have their own issues they have their own uh, dynamics which sometimes affect the people they nominate to I some like, of these I like positions. that you swallowed Nini. <laughs> <laughs> and that does not mean that they are, uh, they are girlfriends or mm. they are boyfriends and so on and so forth. I know that there are certain dynamics which political parties might not be open about in terms of, um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know, sharing that this is how we did decided. our nominations. Uh, this, uh, this is how, how we decided. decided. So but so you know, it. again, that is for political parties. For us, we are players in a different level. Those political parties that are funded by taxpayers mm. they, they they may have the freedom to make decisions about how they run their uh, organizations or political parties but then as uh, taxpayers we also have a role to play in terms of making uh, ensuring that they are accountable to the citizens so that accountability mechanism is what we need also to design as a people uh, and also look at how they do their nominations and that could be one of the formulas that uh, we'll be talking about in terms of you know ensuring that we have not more than two-thirds in terms of political nominations, political party nominations, and so on and so forth. But it's, um, it's still open. Uh, we are looking at uh, options of, you know, how do we incentivize even political parties that adhere to the not more than two-third uh, 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 gender principle. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, once the gender principle is achieved, you'll have other challenges. For instance, LGBTQ. They also want uh, their like, own like uh, a one-fifth rule. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you well, come in, well, Kennedy? Well, well, <laughs> we have other uh, specific groups, uh, groupings, including people living with disabilities. We have the youth, and we need to see that the representation factors in all that. Uh, right now, uh, there are uh, deliberate attempts to have them, uh, uh, you know, nominated into. Uh, positions Who? of uh, the uh, rainbow uh, nation. No, oh. I'm, I'm not saying the rainbow nation. Okay. I'm talking about the, <laughs> the, the 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 people living with disabilities, mm. young people, and anybody. You know those interest groups, uh, the representative of workers, and so on and so forth. So I don't know, uh, but what I can say is that um, though the the not more than two third gender uh, principle factors in a number of other fa uh, other interests. So that, um, uh, you know, we have a nation that is really, uh, truly representative of who we are.
So if we have the that is representative of who we are. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he almost <laughs> put his foot in his mouth. Let <laughs> uh, <laughs> me call you this. <laughs> <laughs> representative of who we are. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, I have no authority and no, no no control of who we are sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who we are, who we are. <laughs> the media's role in all this. What more can we do? What more? What more? more can we help out most important thing is what you are doing right now is already very very important because this is a tool for you know sensitization and mobilizing the public to uh, you know contribute their views to uh, on 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 the on on the not more than two third gender rule this is number one this is one one of the ways but again there's also a lot of opportunities for us to engage further open up the space if there's um, a need for clarity we have experts who can also uh, engage and probably as we continue with our um, uh, uh, public participation we should also be able to continuously engage and uh, and share some of the ideas that we have uh, for as long as everybody has uh, feels that they've made their opinion uh, contributed their opinion to the discussions so as at now maybe i may not be able to say exactly the direction uh, it is taking but with the time then we will be able to know the shape and the formula that we are going to use to crack the not more than two third gender rule so the media uh, uh, is very important because you are able to you know reach the masses and like mm-hmm. now we are going for public participation in different parts of the country i think the media plays a big role yeah you said you did kajiado yesterday where to next and how long is we, it going to we last? we are going to we 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 are targeting 10 uh, regions and we have uh, the next uh, set of uh, activities will be in eldoret will be in uh, we have uh, mombasa has, uh, will be on hold for a while we have eldoret we have uh, Kisumu we have Kakamega we have uh we we have uh, I can share the, the the list at some point but uh, we we are going out to reach uh, the communities and Mombasa is on hold because of the current because flooding because of the current situation mm-hmm. uh, we will do Kilifi also and um, I'm sure that we are going to reach um, almost every part of this country if not this all. will take you how long because uh, Uh, how long do you stay in one place for example kajedo is just one day uh kajedo is one day but there are a series oh. of activities because um we have um, we've made um, that public uh, announcement and people were able to share their opinion or share their memorandum uh through uh, a dedicated email mm. uh, others were able to come in person to give their oral presentations others are still uh, giving their uh, opinions so it's not closed as such so this is just um, uh, the beginning i mean look rwanda the cabinet is more than 50% female mm-hmm. the elected leaders uh, representatives uh, bank ceos professionals more than 50% female what's stopping us is it us we are just stopping ourselves and actually even if you look at the landscape right now in this country you've heard of scenarios where a, a task force has been asked to go and uh, reconstitute because they are not compliant to the not more than two third general so it's not something that we are saying out of blues but real action is happening in every appointment that we are seeing today there's a critical eye that is uh, watching and is checking if it's compliant we've seen organizations or private companies that have an entire male board being taken to task to ask why is it possible in this day and age so it's it's something that everybody is like we we are geared to and the communities and kenyans are already prepared that you know it's very normal for us to have men and women representing uh, different outfits either public private or otherwise mm-hmm. Are you hopeful, Kennedy? Very optimistic and very hopeful. As a man I am. And for men out there, what do you tell them going forward? Speak from your heart, not as uh, someone from masculinity institute just. <laughs> 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 I can say that you know, time has come when uh, this uh, you know, negative masculinity has no uh, place in this country. 
and the more we ignore and the more we um, um, we ignore women as part of our society, the more we continue to suffer the burden of you know leadership. We suffer the burden of you know. Uh, uh, economic development, we suffer the burden of, you know, even the social well-being of our society. Because there are certain things that, as men, we cannot represent women on everything or on certain things. There are things that, based on their lived experiences, they are the ones to speak about them uh, themselves. So men, uh, you must just uh, adjust to that reality.